Um, today we are going to talk about our relationship. Uh, and or just general relationship questions. We asked you guys on Instagram and you guys actually submitted so many questions. A lot of questions. I don't think we're going to be able to answer all of them in this one video because there's so many. So please, I'm sorry if we don't get to your question. Also, um, um, this is going up on, on this channel, Black Cross Roberto channel, because oh, yeah. we feel like we're just going to merge the two worlds together. I think it's easier to do it that way and instead of building a brand new channel. And I feel like, you know, this is the evolution of this channel. So here you go. We have a new face. And um, I, I hope you enjoy it. Because I, I think the last video I posted, it did pretty well on here. So that signaled that you guys wanted to see more. So here you guys have it. I'm here. Okay. So do you want to kind of look through them first? No, I don't no? know. Just go through them. I, I honestly haven't looked at the questions, guys. Um, he but hasn't. I'm excited to answer them and see what you guys are interested in uh, knowing about our relationship. So, mm. it's my girlfriend, by the way. Hi. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is like <laughs> I'm also the mother of this bangs. child. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got bangs, guys. Baby I don't man. know if they came out how I wanted, but it's not my hairstylist's fault. I think it's my fault for not communicating. The hairstylist well is enough. legit. Dude. He's Shout really good. We love him. But, um, I don't know. Anyway. Let's go ahead, guys. Let's go. Okay, so we've answered this question before, but I don't know if we should just start it off because it seems like people constantly ask us this mm -hmm. about how we met. Should we answer it or should we just direct them to our last video? No, let's just do it because you guys, we imposed <laughs> this on you guys, but let's see. Yeah. Let's, we, go ahead, you answer it. I've answered it last time. So, you guys, we met in the most, uh, I guess, what, new wave way? <laughs> we met on a dating app. The most app. modern way. <laughs> yeah, the most modern way. Um, and I think the reason that it worked for us is because we weren't actually, like, desperate to find somebody or anything like that. That's kind of yeah. not why we're on the app. I think we all know why Carlos was on the app, you know, as a man. <laughs> I don't think I was taking it too seriously. As far as me, uh, I think I literally did it as like a kind of a joke with my friend as well. Like I wasn't really taking it seriously. It was something for fun. I had gone out with a friend and she was using it and I was like, oh, that just looks like, like fun. fun yeah. And so I did that, but literally with no expectation, no intention to meet someone. Actually at the time, I don't think either one of us wanted a relationship. I'm yeah. not. I don't. I don't want to speak for you. No, I was. Still, I, I didn't. Yeah. And I was on app for fun. I, I remember um, particularly being on that mostly because I loved fucking with Jordan, <laughs> and I would get some matches, and then I would match everyone who matched me just for fun, you know. And yeah. I think I just found humor in that. So anyway, so we ended yeah. up matching with each other. It was Bumble that we were using, so I had to reach out first. That's and true. I literally just said hi, like it was nothing entertaining or fun or anything, right? Like yeah, I think I, I just said so. hi exactly. and like, you know, and then Carlos started the conversation and um, I think we just kind of almost immediately clicked. And then success. Um, and success and it just happened and I think that's the best way. It's like when you aren't really looking for that, in particular, and you feel you. like, yeah, like if you feel really good and solid about being single, yeah, um, and you feel really good about yourself, like genuinely, and you're not trying to fake it, like you genuinely feel good, like that's when you're gonna find the right person for you. Yeah, you'll attract what you, what you need. So, oh, cool. So I just totally so went out. Attract what you need, guys, please. Yeah. I saw something that said that you attract who you are, which I thought is really interesting because if you think back and previous times of your life and the type of partner that you were with mm -hmm. and their good sides or their bad sides. No, but for real though, if you really start to think about it, I think there's truth to that, like for sure. So you have to be a, a whole good, healthy person and yeah. you'll find that too. Let me go back to the question. Person, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see. Why am I going to pose? Tim did a good job on his haircut, guys. I, I love it. And He's so too. legit. If you're in, in Puerto Verde, like, you really need to go to him. He's the best. Yeah, I'll, I'll link it down below. And you'll pay 
a I good, won't even tell you how much you'll pay. It's a good price, but it's, 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 it's really it's, pretty reasonable. If you're comparing it to U.S. pricing. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you guys, I, take a flight and do it. Trust me. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so this question. Um, would love to know about the dynamic in your relationship with um, your cultural upbringing differences. So, if you guys don't know, I'm Iranian American, um, and Carlos, uh, Salvadorian American. <laughs> uh, actually, I think, well, our cultures obviously definitely have differences, but we both grew up in the states, first yeah. off. So, uh, <laughs> no, I think uh, obviously for us it was it was good, but um, so we both grew up in the states and. A lot of, I think there's a lot of similarities in our culture in terms of like the importance of family and um, you know, that sort of thing. I would say probably if you're really getting into like the nitty gritty of our cultures, like maybe religious differences a little bit, but yeah. even if you go to the core of those like teachings, they're pretty similar, I think. Um, so I actually think for Carlos and I, that's something that in a way we connected on is that our values align a lot, right? We have the core mission, the same core mission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but again, we both grew up in the States too, so I, you know, who knows if we had grown up in like our home country. Yeah, it'd be different, dude. 100%. Yeah, 100%. So I think that has a lot to do with it, you know? I mean, also we grew up in a similar area where you know, not in the same city or anything. It was anything, the same but, but different, yeah. Same but same, different, yeah, you know, kind of same but different experiences. And um, although Carlos is 100% Salvadorian, yeah. you know, like his parents are both from El Salvador, like... MS, baby. You know, he's also like American, you know what I mean? So like, I think even if you're not a mixed person, there's still some like identity differences, you know, when you grow up in a place that's different from like your home culture. Of course, yeah. So. So what does she want to know? Or do they want to know? What's the differences? How, what's our dynamic like because of the differences of our culture? Oh, I think we mesh really well. Like, yeah, the core values like the family and, and um, those type of characteristics, I think, align. So, yeah. Yeah, like, the I don't... The answer is yes. The, the, <laughs> the answer is yes. I would say maybe the only difference is like maybe language barrier sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not with us talking to each other but maybe with our families yeah maybe? it's not yeah it's fine it's, it's a really there's not i don't even think it really there's comes no into play yeah. a lot in our relationship other than the, the values in which we align with yeah i don't think we've had anything that clashed with no our and our cultures. families are both like non traditional traditional so yeah. it's like it's at the same time it's like very like open and freeing i don't know exactly like, like they both of our families are very open and accepting yeah of of each other's people, and yeah. so I don't even know if it really comes into play a lot with our relationship maybe in ways we don't understand fully I think the only difference it's maybe not even cultural but just like um, upbringing maybe it's a little bit cultural like the way I was raised versus you there's a lot of similarities but maybe some of the differences like we responded differently and so there's just differences in our personality and how we like approach the world or see the world um, but I don't know how much that's cultural or just like to the fact that we had different parents, yeah. you know? Um, cool. Anything else want to ask? I know, they're really good. I like this one too. Okay. Were you both open for communication in the beginning of your relationship? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I was. You were too. I yeah, I think that's why we got along so well. I think we were both at a, mo a point in our, at our in our lives where we knew what we wanted, and we knew what we were gonna accept and decline. And I think that um, that was one of the main things I, in any relationship. I think that you know, um, uncommunicative expectations is the reason for failed marriages and relationships. <laughs> So, yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, I, don't know. I think it's something that I actually impressed me about Carlos in the beginning um, is his ability to communicate, which I know was hard for you even in the beginning. But like, I think he really made. I just didn't want any not. I didn't want any BS. I didn't want to go into a relationship like setting a precedence of like 
like playing games or... I don't know how to communicate or, or like, yeah. yeah, I don't want to share my emotions because at the end of the day, that's the thing that ends a relationship or resentment. So I was like, I just might as well just go in with a bang. <laughs> yeah. Like... yeah, I think even in the beginning, like we weren't officially in a relationship yet, but something had come up and Carlos asked and I answered and I was honest. And Carlos, I think, appreciated my honesty, but also it opened up like something for him to communicate to me. And then at that point, I think we both decided that we wanted to be in a relationship. Yeah, like I think we both decided that we like, yeah, what we actually wanted. So I think we were both open in the beginning. And I think that just goes back to like yeah. what I said in the beginning. And be a good, be in a good place and, and, and you're, you're, I guess, maybe not your best self ever because you're going to constantly evolve but like be in a healthy place yeah. like mentally emotionally and you're going to find somebody who's there to meet you there and don't be afraid to express yourself yeah and if someone's not in the beginning trust that they're not going to be and move on you know like you're not yeah. here to fix people it's tough okay <laughs> When was our relationship challenged the most and what persevered? I'm curious to, to know actually what you think. Fuck. Um, challenges. I mean, I think after any big life changes, I think it challenges like when we first got a dog, that was a challenging yeah. situation. Then when we had a kid, that was a challenging situation. It still is because he's growing. So it's yeah. a different There's kid different every single things. day. Yeah. So it's like, there's always different challenges, but yeah, I think any time that there's growth, there's going to be difficulties yeah. and that's where the communication comes from. So it's not one time. I don't think it should be a one time thing. I remember this one argument we had, we grew so much from that one argument. I think it's, or, or you know, challenge. It's always like, it has to be kind of constant. Um, if you are in a evolving relationship, Right. And I think, yeah, like life does happen, right? Like things happen that yeah. you never have gone through together as a couple yet. Yeah, I would say for us, the probably the biggest, we, we went through something together, uh, like earlier on in our relationship that was pretty monumental, but not in a negative way. So like, I think we grew a lot then as far as trusting each other. But I would say, yeah, getting, honestly, guys, getting a dog together really was a big one. Like, yes. the first one. The first, like, really big thing where there was moments where we really disagreed about things, you know? Like, I am a little bit more of an anxious person, and yeah. so, like, I approach things a little bit differently than Carlos does. Carlos is way more, like, kind of... Flow go with the flow, very chill. But still handle like, situations. No, he does. But just go he does, like, but still, like, like for me, there were certain things that came up mm -hmm. that I didn't react the best way. And there were certain things that came up for me where I felt Carlos didn't react in the best way. And I think we had to just come to an understanding with each other about why those things came up, what, what it means to the other person, how it made the other person feel and then come to some kind of resolution about yeah. how we can move forward with that. And I think in us being able to do that, it also helped us to know that we can be parents together. Yeah. <laughs> because th true. that was hard and we were able to talk about it and then figure out how to work through it. And I already loved Carlos like more than anything. And so like, I already thought he was gonna be the father of my job. <laughs> like, Damn, I, I was plot the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Inseminate me, please. Um, no. But but no, it's like when you go through those things, you really can see like someone's character by how they choose to handle that situation yeah. of how they choose to handle a disagreement. And for me, the fact that we didn't we didn't walk away from each other, we didn't allow that to allow separation. Even if there's moments that are uncomfortable, like we work through it yeah, together, you know? Cause there's definitely, in any relationship, if it's a healthy relationship, I think you're gonna have moments like that. You know, it's always healthy to even think about relieving the other person. I said this last time too, I was like, bro, like there's no pressure. Like the more pressure you feel like you have to be with someone, the more difficult challenges are gonna get. Like for me, it's like, if we fucking split up, we split up, dude. There's nothing that, you know, 
it's yeah. no, and not in a, like and I'm gonna He's go. Gonna leave me no, now. but I'm just saying like the more it's like almost when you think about life in money terms, where you're like, am I gonna be financially secure 15 years from now? And then you're thinking about that, and it's just and you're like, right now I don't have 20 million dollars, but hopefully by that time, it's just like you're building pressure in the present that is unnecessary. That doesn't exist. Yeah. That doesn't exist. So that's why yeah. it's like you know. I, I don't know, I feel like there's a freeing part of that, like, and it might sound fucked up, but it, it is, life is fucked up. But it's also like, if you look way. at yourself as that, it's almost like when people say, if, you, if you're, if like, think about death all the time, you're more happy because you're like, you appreciate what you have. Like, yeah. Steven, no, well, that's not Steven Seagal, oh sorry. <laughs> Steven Seagal, Steven Seagal probably did say in that, I'm sure. Um, Steve Jobs, <laughs> same shit, right? Steven Seagal, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is like, what, death is like the only thing that is like, um, certain, certain, whatever. So he had that perspective where he was like, if you were to die today, what would you be happy for? Whatever. So I feel like it's, it's just like, yeah, that pressure that some people put on themselves of like, I have to be with this person forever. It's like, you know, maybe think about if you didn't have them in your life, what, what would that look, what would that look like? And then you'll be like, actually, I'll be, no, let's, this is worth it. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think what, yeah. I guess what you're saying is like, live in the present moment and not in the future yeah in a way. Steven Seagal said that too <laughs> <laughs> no but like no I, I i guess i agree with that too the first time he told me that i was like damn bitch i have never thought about leaving you but if that's what helps carlo it's not, no, it's, it's not like, no. if that's what helps you to it's decide no you know what it's it like is? letting go of just like it's the like pressure. letting go of the pressure of like what if i don't get this job what if i don't get it's like at the end of the day, things are going to be okay. And I think that helps like the, whatever problem you're going through is like, it's not that big of a problem to that extent. Like if you go there, you know, like, yeah. Do you know what helps me? It, it, I feel like it's the same thing, but in a different, the way I frame it is a little different is like, what helps me is to think that nothing is going to stay the same yeah. ever. So if we're going through a hard time right now, as long as we're both showing up for each other in the relationship, it's not going to feel like this, tomorrow or in a week from now like whatever bad feeling i have right now for whatever happened like it's not going to always feel that way and the best times the best times that you're having it's not always going to feel that way either yeah. so like you know another thing that happened was uh, us having a baby that changed a lot of things in our relationship obviously yeah you absolutely. know like it had to it wasn't just about us anymore and so you know um knowing that this particular phase of our relationship is a season of our life. It's not forever, you know, like, and not that we're not going to always have a child, but our child's going to grow up, you know, and not need us so much. Yeah. If, if you're just hanging out on the couch with your significant other, never having a problem, there's probably a problem. So yeah, it's like, yeah, I agree. Um, okay. How do you enjoy the beauty of everything you do and balance the work of content creation? Um, I, since I've been doing it a little bit longer, I don't take it as serious anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think I learned that a while ago. And um, I think that it's just like any other thing, any other um, pressure of life, uh, we're all getting something. We're all trying to go for the same thing. You know, we're all on the same road and trying to get to the same place the same place is we're just doing it differently but yeah so the pressures are the same thing um but i think for me it's just like trying to create a balance trying to create a boundary for work life especially being in a, like social media content creator influencer space it could be hard to like stop and then you look back and you're like damn i didn't enjoy anything i was doing um and i think that's when you start to feel bad about yourself resenting yourself and it doesn't have to be that way because you could ultimately create the life that you want by stopping and being present. And yeah, even if it's like five minutes, 10 minutes of just absorbing something that's not a material thing, like, or just having a cigar outside chilling for 30 minutes is good. That's called quality life, a, a quality life in the lifestyle. So um, I think for me, it's just kind of like stopping and enjoying moments. Like yesterday was a good example. Like my the dog had diarrhea, took a sh dump all over the baby stroller, and Amanda was like, "We have to go home." And I was like, "Dude, 
okay, and then I went to go wash the, the car, the, the, the thing in the ocean. After I cleaned the very wall, it wasn't poop on a thing. I saw I had a poopy hand. And then, and surprisingly, it wasn't my child who did it. And I went to the ocean and the, my, both of my shoes got soaked in the water. And I was like, at this point, I can't go home because I'm going to go home and start complaining about what, what just happened. So I was like, you know what, let's just go to a nice restaurant with wet shoes, smelly hands, and get some wine. And that's then get some wine. And that's what we did, man. We just did it. And it's those moments where you just have to be like, you know what, fuck it. Yeah. Let life take its course and enjoy it. Yeah, I think he I think he answered that really well, so I don't think I have anything to yeah, add. Shut up. Next question. <laughs> um, what were some of the first things you looked for in one another to Well, how do you handle? Out? You have to handle because like, it's a good because I've been doing this for a long time and I've finally gotten a place where you you you've been starting okay. about it. You yeah, haven't got I'm it. not in that place yet, a hundred percent. Like so I So maybe that's starting. I think it you know for me, wait, context, and she just quit her job too. So like, yeah. But, so I was working just for like, you know, yeah, context. I was working a corporate job for the last ten years, like, you know, doing the whole like working your way up, blah blah blah. I was in like a relatively high position, and then you know, making re relatively good money. Probably, f most people would consider it very good money. Um, and but I was deeply unsatisfied and deeply unhappy with what I was doing um, for a variety of reasons, and I knew I wanted to make a change and Carlos came into my life and um, he's a creative and I've, I have always been a creative as well and felt like that I wasn't doing that in the work that I was doing um, but it was something that was always part of my life and um, Carlos and I decided to partner up and make a plan and make a plan and we did and we helped build his business up together and Somehow I got involved with me being in, the, in front of the camera. I never wanted that per se just because I feel like, you know, I've always been shyer when it comes to that type of thing or nervous about it. Um, but I think Carlos just helped me to feel more comfortable and I think it works for his brand and also, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out my, my side of it, you know, separate on twice the mood. Um, yeah, it's doing well. And it's done really well for the amount of time that we've been doing that. I'm, I'm really grateful. She's almost at 100K in like seven, or less, under a year, put it that way. Yeah. Really so, yeah, it, it, yeah. But with that being said, the, um, I'm learning, you know, some of the stuff that Carlos has, is used to. It's not unlike having a corporate job, honestly. It's just that. You know, I even with a corporate job, you saw how I reacted to certain yeah, things. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, my, just, it's like take, someone taking away something you've created, and, and that, that, that hurts more. So it's like a big hard corporate job, if you get fired, it's like okay, I have to go I back go get into another. the workforce. But it's not, you haven't you haven't created the, the foundation, and right? All that and so. so anyway, so for me, I feel like it has been a little bit of an emotional roller coaster so far because I'm learning, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm learning about that, and I'm learning about how to let go of certain things that are just not within my control and. Yeah. But overall, it's a, a thousand million times better than what I was doing. So, highly recommend. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next question. <laughs> uh, what were some of the first things you looked for in one another to figure out if you were a good match? Uh, for me, the biggest thing was communication and honesty. And she hit both in... She, she hit yeah, both targets for sure when we first met. Um, and I like any type of like, and also like making sure that I listen to my gut. And I did for situations and I was, I did communicate, she communicated back. I was honest, she was honest back and she removed the bad feeling that I had because I thought she was honest. So for me, it was those two traits for sure. like. And she was extremely, she's extremely beautiful as well. So she hit that. Oh, <laughs> thank and you. And yeah, I think that was, that was mainly it. To me, it was just like, even be, besides the looks, it was more of just like, let's see how well we could communicate and how um, trustworthy this person is. Um, okay, so for me, um, the f this is something that like, for me, really stuck out was how, 
I felt around Carlos immediately. Um, you know, maybe not everyone can relate to that, but I've always been the type of person where I very much live behind a wall. Like I don't really 100% be myself around almost anybody besides like maybe my family, a, a couple of friends. Um, I'm just kind of a guarded person, mm -hmm. but I almost immediately felt super comfortable with Carlos to be my true self, like my humor, everything. Carlos's sense of humor, like almost immediately I was like, okay, like I, I can, I can fuck with this guy for sure. Like his sense of humor aligns with mine so much. I feel like, um, I feel like we really get each other. Like we're not offended by each other and we can trust me. Someone from the outside looking yeah, in on our relationship yeah. might be like, whoa, like the things they talk about, the things they say to each other, but like we get it with each other and we're not offended with each other. And if that ever does happen, it's usually coming from a place of insecurity. But, um, but no, it was like the way I felt like so myself so soon was like a really big weird feeling that I had. Like I just like, probably never felt that way with a, a, a man, really. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I felt really comfortable. And also like, obviously I was attracted to him. Um, and then, you know, his values, like the things that we would talk about. Um, I was like, wow, like, I don't know. Um, I think the, the biggest thing for me was how I felt. Mm, yeah. Um, because like, that I just- be a, a really important thing. Yeah, like pay attention. Cause I feel like you really, your body even yeah. tells you like when somebody is right for you or not. I just think that we get so stuck into like, oh, do they check boxes or not? Cause I was seeing somebody also before him where checked all the boxes, but I felt nothing for that person. And so like, and I kind of, I think you just kind of sometimes, especially, I don't know if it's like that for guys, but maybe like if there's a really hot girl, you might be telling yourself, she's so fucking hot. Why don't I want to hang out with her more? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like it could be like that also. Like I, I think sometimes we try to convince ourselves that we shouldn't be in a relationship because the person is a good person or a great person, but like you don't feel that with them for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I did. I felt that way f about him. I just felt immediately comfortable. I could be myself. We had fun together. Like I wanted to hang out with him, and um, I could also be vulnerable, which I never was before with anybody, really. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> I love you. How is y'all's lifestyle with kids and being content creators? What else do you do? Um, it's fun. It's uh, a good question, guys. Um, I think that for me, I try to really merge my worlds together, and it it's been pretty fun. It's been it's uh, has it been easy. It's been easy ever since that she quit her job and I was able to work more because before I was taking care of the baby, of uh, all throughout the the entire day. So. It was um it was a little more challenging then, but it was also fun because I got to experience that, and you know that's something I would never could get back and or buy. So that was a really good experience. Um, it was fun, and now I think that um, since she's not working corporate anymore, it's it's just been kind of like um, yeah, I don't know. Like it's we're still trying to figure it out, but it's been fun. It's not. It hasn't been. It is hard, but it isn't at the same time because it's worth it and having a job like this is fun and it's hard and it's worth it as well. So yeah, I don't know. It's been, um, it's been good. I, maybe you can answer this better. Maybe no, this I, coffee's kicking in hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I honestly think that, um, yeah, there are moments that are difficult because anything, no matter what your life looks like, you'll have difficult moments, but is it the same as our lifestyle that we were living before in terms of difficulty? No, mm -hmm. absolutely not, you know? Um, there are moments where I think sometimes it's tough because it's like, for example, um, we're very lucky because we live somewhere where my, uh, my mom lives close by and so she can watch our son um, once or twice a week for us for a few hours where as if we were completely on our own, 
Um, I think that might be a lot harder. Yeah, we were. Because we had help because in, at, in the States as well. We did, help. yeah. So it's like... Yeah, we had help with his family yeah. um, and my sister. Um, and so in the States, we even had help, but it was like just the, the sheer amount of hours worked and like the stress of the job and mm. like all of that was so different. Um, I would say the most stressful part about that kind of this lifestyle is that you're raising a small human who has his own needs and he's not going to work on the same schedule as you guys. So um, trying to find balance with that and making sure that you're the reason we did this was to give our son the best possible life and to make sure that both of us were very involved parents yeah. for him. And so we don't like to spend too much time away from him. That's that's not the goal. Our goal is to spend the most time with him. But when we're out shooting content and things like that, it is very hard yeah. to have your toddler with you. And it's not really fair to him either because he's Doesn't not getting it. the stimulation or the different, you know, the activity that he may need during that time. So that's why we have my mom um, watch. But there's been times where she hasn't been available um, for her own reasons. And we have had to bring him every single time. And that would probably be the biggest yeah. stress. Like, but it, yeah, it's a hit or miss. Sometimes he's chill. He just wants like you know we don't have a TV here, but sometimes we give him uh, the phone to watch something. He'll just like it. And then, but that's literally been within the last like. Yeah, but it's it's like yeah, it's a, it's not like weeks. it's not it's it's not good or bad. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I would say. Um, but it's been. What fun. was even the question? I don't know where we went with this. What? How is our, our, our lifestyle is amazing. Yeah, Let's great. just put it that way. Yeah. Like I'm very happy. I feel grateful. Also something that I started doing and Carlos does sometimes too is I, the five minute journal. I feel like it's all over social media and you probably see a bunch of people do it. So you probably already yeah, know about check it. Check it out. But um, I like it. It just helps me stay in a good mindset. It's first thing in the morning and right before you go to sleep. And it, you just talk about three things you're grateful for, three things that would make the day amazing, um, and then some kind of affirmation. So you're starting your day with a really good mindset, frame of mind. Yeah. And then you end the day saying three amazing things that happened that day. So I love that because if let's say you had a bad day, you have to force yourself to really feel like what were the amazing parts of my day? And then write that down. Yeah. And then um, one thing you could have done better, which I also think is great because it helps keep you accountable. So I like that because we're living a great lifestyle, but no matter what type of lifestyle you think is the best lifestyle, you're still gonna have days that don't feel great. Yeah. You're still gonna have moments that don't feel great. And so let's just keep it in perspective. That's what I try to do. Let me keep it in perspective and think about where we came from, where we are now, and where we're going. And I, that always makes me feel so much better. Facts. Facts. Okay, let me see, next question. Um, should we answer some that are like not specific to us? Like just sure. questions about relationships? Let me try to see. Sure. Should a man always approach first and why? Should yeah. I answer that? Yeah. As a woman? I mean, it depends. I, I, I mean, I don't I, think so. At this, yeah, at this climate, I think it depends. I, I think sometimes a girl would be more forward, and that's totally fine. Um, but I think that a guy should always put more effort than the girl, I feel like. I don't think so either, though. I would say for me, it depends. I don't know. It's just, it it's just like, I feel like, I, I feel like some, some kids are soft nowadays. Like, I don't think they have yeah. the balls to go up to a girl. Or, and if they do, I don't think sometimes, like, guys think they're good enough for what they want. They're, so, okay, I don't know. Let, it's me, a hard let question. me put it this yeah, way. Yeah, anyway, true. Let me put it this way. I feel like I'm a feminine energy and Carlos is a masculine energy. So our relationship is more traditional in that way. So I did feel like Carlos should do more pursuing in the beginning. Like, okay, this might also be weird, but like for me, that's what I felt worked for me. Like I've always felt like guys should pursue a little more. So in that sense, yeah. But not everybody is going to be like that. There are some men that might have more of a feminine energy and they are attracted to women with more of a masculine energy. And that woman might be the one that's more of the aggressor in that situation, right? So like, I think it just depends on the person you are and the people that you attract, attract or you're wanting to attract, right? Like 
if you're a, a masculine guy, like a masculine energy, and not because you feel like you have to be, because that's genuinely who you are, I think you might, you may just be more naturally inclined to, to make the first move. If but you don't have it, enough personal capacity to make yeah. the first move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, doesn't bother. Right? <laughs> no, I think, I think, yeah, I, I, I think. She's asking us. It's not general. She's asking us. So I think yes, a it's guy a should a guy just be us. more forward. And if a girl does make the first move, then cool. You still have to hold the ball and run with it. So. Good I luck. guess I. This is something that I always wonder though, because like, yeah, like if the girl does make a first move, it depends on who's the guy, right? Like I've had girls make the first move, and I didn't have, I, you know, that. Did you feel like that was attractive? Yeah. Like in a way that you wanted to be in a relationship with that person, or did it make you think things that you shouldn't be thinking? No, I was like, damn, this is cool. She, I mean, you know, whatever. And then I, I think, um, yeah, I, to me, it, it wasn't offensive. I knew who I was. I know, like, I, I'm not gonna be like. I don't know. I was just like, okay, cool. Like it just helped me get to my destination faster. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, did you take the person seriously or not? Like yeah, genuinely, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you were genuinely yeah. considering that person to be girlfriend. I wasn't or? considering. I mean, it wasn't like a thing like that. But I was like, oh, I, I mean, I continued talking to the person. Oh, it wasn't like a thing. I don't know. I don't think it was good or bad. I think. I think in general, like it, it doesn't like as a guy, you still should be like being the person in charge of like handling the situation. I don't, I, you know, I feel like um, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm more traditional in that sense. It's like, dude. Oh, I think it is a girl. I don't know if it's a girl or a guy. Sorry, I can't see the photo very well. Sorry if I said that you're a guy and you're not. Um, I would say if you're a woman and you want to approach a guy, do it. Just do it. Yeah, I just like it. Like, different times if you're system. feeling that you want to, do it. If you feel like I and don't want to, guys, then like, don't. It's not even hard. It's like, hey, and you're, the guy's probably like, oh, okay. okay. Cool, <laughs> so that's why I feel like it's always going to be like you're still going to need to take ownership well, of that move. You know, I think the like, reason right, the like, reason I asked you about how you genuinely thought about it is because I think sometimes women feel that if they make the first move, the guy's going to get the wrong idea about her and not take her seriously. Well, like they'll want to have girl. sex with her. And they'll do that, well, but then they won't want to be in a relationship with her. So I think sometimes, maybe, I don't know, I don't want to make any assumptions, but I think maybe that's why a girl's asking, should the girl make the first move or not? Because No, I think it depends, on, and it depends on the, the girl too. Like if you're meeting, like, it, it's, it's like, if you're meeting a, a drunk girl at the bar and she's making a first move, then maybe she does that a lot. And you're like, I, this is not something I want to fucking, I, I want to be involved with. Uh, but... If it's like if you're if you meet a girl and she's cool and, and you're on a date and then she kisses you and you're like, oh, how did she, you get on the date? Someone had to ask the person on the date. I'm just saying, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 what I'm saying is like, I, I will. Yeah, I there's some situations you're talking, where you're just like, you're just you, in a group of uh, uh, in a room full of people and then uh, you are attracted somehow someone attracted to you and you're just talking and then you hang out and there's no like we're on a date it's just like oh we're just next to each other like and then she happens to kiss someone and kiss you and you're like oh okay cool like whatever it's not like a i think think about this as a woman think about how you like how you want to be in a relationship and like again, who you're gonna attract, and you have to ask yourself, like, you know, first of all, you might be, like I said, have a more masculine energy, and you're gonna probably best fit with a man that has a little bit more of a feminine energy, and I hope people don't take it the wrong way or think I'm saying no. something weird, but if you kind of wanna do that, do it, just do it, because like the guy who's not approaching you probably does like you, Maybe, you know, yeah. and they're just maybe, maybe they have more of a feminine way about them or the, the guys are going to take this the wrong way. I don't know how else to say it, but they just may not have that, um, be being as aggressive as yeah, maybe no, other guys, guys and they genuinely want you to talk to them. So yeah, just the guys who won't make the first move that I know that would be like, no, nah, cause I, you know, she has to kind of give me a sign first and it's like, yeah, it's, it is what it is. I feel like yeah. just someone has to be the aggressor or something. <laughs> Not yeah. the <laughs> but I guess for me the reason I never did because I would rather be the more feminine energy in a relationship and I feel like if I'm starting out being aggressive yeah. with a guy then they may not ever have that and I may just one not be interested in them anymore or they may not give me what I'm hoping for in a relationship yeah. so that's probably why I wouldn't do it but it's up to you it's up to you and it's but up it's to fine. what you anything want. goes anything goes 
Um, what do you think about high standards? What do I think about high standards? I think high standards are good. I mean, as, as long as you're working hard enough to meet them, it's all good. But don't complain if it's taking you a while to get there. But I feel like I think everyone should have a high standard. I mean, I mean, everyone should have a standard in general. I think that if you're just going to go through life just getting what comes to you, you don't work towards nothing, then you're never going to be happy or satisfied with yourself. So I feel like just if you want to have a standard, be ready to work and pursue be ready to meet that standard. Yeah, is what I would say. Because you have to consider like what you're gonna bring to the relationship as yeah. well. So if you're gonna have standards for somebody that you can't meet yourself, I wouldn't have that standard. Exactly. That's it. Period. Period. That's good. That's it. Okay. How do you have a long lasting relationship when you pass the honeymoon phase? It's a good question. Communication, I think, and effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I think um, the, at the honeymoon, pre-honeymoon pre phase, you are doing everything for the person to kind of wow them. So just don't forget that type of energy. <laughs> I don't know, keep the same energy. <laughs> yeah, I think that when you're in a long relationship, I do think there are times that it can become transactional in a way, like moments where you're just going through your motions of everyday life and you forget to like stop and like admire the other person and tell them how much you admire them or like make time and space for that type of energy, you know? Um, so I think it's important to do that. And I think it's also important when you're in a long lasting relationship to remember that you might be in a certain season of your relationship that won't always be that way. Yeah. Like that's one thing I think, again, like we had to, I think, come to terms with, with having like a newborn, having an infant, having a toddler, all of those things are different. Like those different stages were different. It affected our relationship differently. It gave us more or less time with each other in different ways. Um, it gave, you know, for me, like during the newborn stage, I was healing and it was really hard for me, yeah. very difficult for me. And I didn't show up in the same way that I normally would show up for probably for Carlos because I literally couldn't, I yeah. physically couldn't. And I think he was very understanding about that. Um, so I think it's about being open to telling the other person when you need something and being open to hear and receive the other person's feedback too you know because it's not always about you yeah. so you're in a partnership you know so right. yeah so just keep that communication going and i think if you guys both want to be in the relationship you That'll will work. work on it you know boy you did not put an editing question in our relationship q a like <laughs> I'm gonna get you those presets real quick. How long have we been together? That's an easy one. Five years. Okay, I think we should do like one more, right? Yeah. Like this is a long video. Yeah, tell them. Um, can someone love two people at the same time? Fuck yeah. No. Um, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. in love with Loretta Ray, so yeah. I, don't know. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I, think so. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, to be I mean, in love I, I, with two people at the same time? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know, dude. I've never been in love with two people at the same time because I've never been in that like missed relationship. So I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know how to answer this question because I, I never, like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's a, who, who, what kind of question is that? Why? What is this person's? Because I think goal? there's. I, I listen. I think there's probably people that think they're in love with more than one person and they don't know how to choose or like whatever. No, and you're just probably in love. Of, you're you're I, probably in love with the idea. The of love idea of someone, or, and then you're you're probably you're probably out of love or out of excitement in that. In, and you're looking you're fantasizing for about else. the ideal like love or excitement that someone else can give you. But it's a lot of work. I mean, if you have enough bandwidth to do it, I guess so. But 
at the end of the day, can you be in love with more than one person? You probably can, but also you probably can't. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't I've never dabbled in. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, cheating. I don't know. Like even cheating is like. No. It's not. You, know, it's you not don't like, treat someone you love in a yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, way. If you're in an open relationship, that's that's agreed upon between two people, perhaps. Yeah. But I would say that I just think that we can only talk from our yeah, experience because we're not every person in the planet. I don't have, I don't know that I have the bandwidth to know somebody at the level that I would love them in the way that I love Carlos, yeah. because that level of like intimacy, that level of vulnerability, that level of everything requires so much time so much effort, yeah, so much attention, yeah. so much cultivation that I don't know how people do that multiple times over and over and over. But if I was, if I, if I came but, into the game with two girls and I mean, maybe I'd be, I would think different, but yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, like that's what I'm saying. I'm only speaking from, from my perspective. And maybe shouts like, out to you. Yeah, shouts out to you. Like if that's what works for you. The grass I, is always green. Right. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> it is, I was just probably like, yeah, it's the grass is always green. But, but I think there might be a difference in some of those situations though we're not maybe not talking about being in love with them but being like this person fills my cup in a certain way and I like to spend time with them but that's different I think than being in love with somebody like especially if you have multiple sexual partners but it's not about having a serious relationship yeah. with them um, um, so. I don't know I, like I would say from my own perspective I don't think I could be just because I don't think I have that type of bandwidth to get to know somebody on that level where I'm like now in love with you um, because I just feel like I'm pretty focused on the one relationship that yeah. I have um, but with that being said I love like my family members I love multiple people in that way but it's a totally different relationship right so I don't even know if it's comparable like it's not the same as like an intimate partner relationship so I don't know, that's just from my perspective, but... Let's get it, one more in, let's get one more One question. more? Yeah. I hope you guys are still sticking around. That question was, who is that person? <laughs> let's, let's, let's invite them on here so we, they could explain themselves. I think it's a girl. The, the photos are so small, it's hard to tell. Um, do you want to answer a question about us or like another general? Just a fun one now. No, I'm just kidding. No, let's just do this too well. How do you know if a guy likes you? Well, how's that a question about how can I answer that question? How, well, how can a girl tell if a guy likes them? Or a, a guy tells a guy or, you know, whoever, a person. How can you tell if someone likes you? Um, reciprocation, responsive, and... Are they showing genuine interest in who you are as a person? Are they respecting you? Are they giving you their time? Um, yeah, I would say those are the three fucking big ones. Um, yeah. Do you, do we fight? Yes. Yes, we do. Another question, one more. Come on, give us a, oh a, a, a good ending one. These are so like... <laughs> uh, yes, we do, moving on. Hmm. Something not too like, something that's a good ending, right guys? Let's get a good ending one. What would be your ending question? Put it down below in the comment section, we'll respond. How do we fix our issues? Is that not a good one? I don't fucking know what you love. No, no, no. <laughs> We're gonna fight about this, guys. Just kidding. Um, what's your love language? No, he's still on the floor, guys. Have you been hurt in past relationships and how? He's still on the floor, guys. <laughs> what do you think about age gap both ways? And ah, how? yes. And we're back. <laughs> a MILF is a fucking, yeah, that's good. Uh, a MILF. Uh, I, think, I like age gaps, actually. Um, I, well, it depends on what the age gap is. If the person is anywhere in their formative years, meaning they're below 25 years old. No, I old, think age gaps are, don't ever be in a relationship. I think a serious relationship with someone that's extremely older, extremely young, extremely younger than you shouldn't be a serious thing. But I think a fling with an older person uh, is fun. 
Yeah, they could teach you stuff. For yeah, sure. they could teach you stuff. It teaches stuff. Uh, it teach you learn about yourself, and and I think that you know you. I don't know. It's 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 just like a fun thing to do, but like yeah. to, to to do it like seriously, like and be like, oh, I'm in a relationship with like Dane Cook and his 18 year old girlfriend or whatever at the time. Um, that's way too young. That's um, what I'm saying is I feel like if you're older than the formative years. And you're with someone who's in those formative years. Yeah. I don't. I think that might be problematic, yeah. especially coming from like for me and my personal experience. Um, when you're young, you feel like you are mature. You feel like you might feel like you're yeah, ahead of your out, yeah. your time. Um, you might feel you might look around at your peers and be like, oh, like they're whatever. If you think you're the most mature, whatever person, when you have somebody who's so much older, has so much more life experience than you coming in, there very well could be a power play there and a manipulation there. Whether or not that older person understands like consciously that they're doing that or not, I think that that comes into play in a way that is not healthy. But I don't want to speak for every relationship. I just think as a general rule, if you're in formative years, I don't think you should be in a serious relationship with someone who's much, much older than you. Um, until your brain has fully developed mm -hmm. and then maybe yeah maybe like maybe true. yeah because I feel like those age gaps don't mean as much when you're a fully grown adult but like for example if you're 30 years old and you're with a 40 year old 30 50 like yeah. 30 40 maybe 30 50 might be a little different too but I don't know like who knows but I think when you're 30 years old like go ahead have your age gap then you know but before that, I think let give yourself the time to fully develop, yeah. you know, before you're in these like serious life altering relationships. I don't know. That's what I think. But, but as I a think. guy, yeah, as a guy perspective, I, for me, I'm a big fan of MILFs. Um, yeah, for fun. Have yeah, fun. for fun. Have fun, you know, and, and, and just like um, enjoy the priceless scent of an old lady. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> the priceless scent of an old lady. He really does like MILFs guys, it's so funny. Thank God, because even though I'm younger than him, I can age and hopefully he'll still be like attracted to me. You know? MILFs, 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 I like an old lady. It's all because of Tiffler's mom. I've always liked older guys too, so I'm, I'm not trying to say like all age gaps are wrong, but if it's a huge age gap and you're in your four years, I'm like, yeah. maybe not. But yeah. Sweet guys, cool. I hope you guys found that fun and you guys stuck around to the last question let, let us know if you guys have any questions for us here on youtube and, and we'll uh respond to those have you maybe had we any... do a, a q a for youtube maybe not uh instagram this time maybe youtube mm -hmm. we'll find like a fun question that you guys have uh it doesn't have to be relationship it could be anything um yeah anything but yeah thank you guys for sticking around it's been a while we hope you enjoy this podcast and shout out to the sponsor reclass.shop shout out don't forget to put style on everything thank you guys bye, bye.